It was the last day of school for the term yeah. when Miss Blythe gave the class a surprise project to do over the holidays. I want each and every one of you to grow a vegetable over the holidays and bring it back to show the class. Oh. Yes, Millie? But I don't know how to grow vegetables. Yeah. That's the point. You'll have to find out, won't you? Yes, Molly. Can we do it with a friend? Of course. And you each have to grow a vegetable of your own. And no, what? Humphrey, I don't want to see robots, man-eating lizards or dynamite. Just vegetables. <laughs> so Millie and Molly went to get some advice from the best vegetable grower in the whole town. You go first. No, you. Okay. I'll go first. I don't think she's at home. Let's ask someone else. But Aunt Maud knows more about growing vegetables than anyone. But, well, can't we ask someone who isn't so... Hmm... Snippy? Crabby? Impatient? Hard to get along with? Yes, yeah, she is. But Aunt Maud's the best gardener in the whole town. If you want to know about books, I can help you. But Aunt Maud really is the one to ask. You won't find anyone else who knows as much about growing vegetables in the whole town. I can help you with pets. Ag loss property and road safety, but vegetables? You really need to ask Aunt Maud about growing vegetables because she's the best... In the whole town. Mm-hmm. So Millie and Molly ended up back at Aunt Maud's and found her in the magnificent garden at the back of her house. Fiddlesticks! You can't grow vegetables? Why, Aunt Maud? You have to be able to stick at it all the time. You have to love your little green friends and tend them and give them your all. <coughs> hmm. Even when you don't feel like it, you have to have tenacity. Mm. That's why I'm the best gardener in the whole town. I'm tenacious. We can be tenacious too. Tenacious, tenacious, tenacious. Well, I don't believe it. But we can, Aunt Maud. We can, really. Oh. <laughs> we'll see. Come back tomorrow. Aunt Maud really didn't expect Millie and Molly to come back. She didn't think they'd be tenacious enough to do even that. But Millie and Molly surprised even themselves when they turned up to spend the next day with Aunt Maud, ready to learn how to be tenacious vegetable gardeners. But they had another surprise waiting for them out in the garden. Ow! What? Little sticks! Huh? I've hurt my wretched leg! Can't get up! We'll get you some help, Aunt Maud. I don't want any help, hmm? but I especially don't want any doctors. What kind of doctor are you? Six weeks? Fiddlesticks. You've broken your leg, Aunt Maud. It'll take that long to mend. Well, what am I going to do all that time? And who's going to look after my garden? We'll look after it, Aunt Maud. But you have to tell us what to do. You? Ah, you won't stick at it. Yes, we will. We came back today, didn't we? One day. I'm talking six weeks. <laughs> I'd try to find something to keep Aunt Maud busy. Without her gardening, she's going to be even more difficult to get along with. I heard that. I might have broken my leg, but my hearing still works. <laughs> Good luck. Well, what are you doing out there? The garden's not going to look after itself, you know. So, while Molly watered the garden exactly how Aunt Maud had told her, Millie tried to keep Aunt Maud busy with a story. Auntie, your special friend to all the little guinea pigs. I don't like stories. I'm a doing person. I like to do. Find me something I can do. The next day, Millie was told to dig in smelly manure to make the soil rich for planting more vegetables, while Molly tried to find something for Aunt Maud to do. Aha! Uh -huh. A jigsaw? It's something to do, Aunt Maud. I don't see the point of jigsaws. What do you do when you finish them? But they're fun while you're doing them. Oh, fiddlesticks, I don't like fun. I like to do things that have a purpose. Besides, anyone can do a jigsaw. Oof. Millie, that's not a weed. Molly, pull harder. Those weeds aren't going to jump out of the ground by themselves, you know. Uh, Millie, that's not a weed either. Uh, Don't think of having a rest till morning tea time. I never take a break till lunch, and that's why my garden is the best in the whole town. 
Millie and Molly definitely had to find something for Aunt Maud to do. She was becoming impossible. What's this? It's wool, Aunt Maud. I can see that. What am I supposed to do with it? We thought you might like to knit a winter blanket. Ha! <laughs> I can't knit. Don't like knitting. I like gardening. I'm good at it. The best in the whole town. But it's something to do until you can garden again, Aunt Maud. Knitting is very useful and lots of people can't do it. You might become the best knitter in the whole town. Hmm. Is knitting too hard, Aunt Maud? We'll find something else for you to do. Yeah, that's the trouble with you young people. You give up too easily. So Aunt Maud started to knit. At first she was slow and made mistakes. And a lot of fuss. Oh, fiddlesticks and fumble fingers! Over the next few weeks, Millie and Molly came each day and followed Aunt Maud's instructions on looking after the garden. Looks like we didn't give this one enough water. We'll make sure next time Aunt Maud won't be happy. But Aunt Maud had something else on her mind. At the end of the first week, Aunt Maud was still knitting with less fuss. Fiddlesticks! And by the end of the month, she was knitting with no fuss at all. And the garden was looking as healthy as ever. Well, that's six weeks, Aunt Maud. Your legs all better. About time. You can go back to your garden now. I'm not ready for the garden. Huh? Hmm? When will you be ready? I don't know. Oh, why? Are you going to give up looking after my garden? Can't stick at it, eh? No, Aunt Maud. We'll mm -hmm. keep gardening. Uh. When will you stop knitting blankets, Aunt Maud? When I'm ready. I heard that. Really? Yes, I will be the best knitter in the whole town. And while there was nothing wrong with Aunt Maud's hearing, Millie and Molly started to worry that something else was wrong with Aunt Maud when the whole house started to fill up with blankets. And Millie and Molly didn't know how to look after the garden when the winter snows came. <coughs> so they called Dr Smiley again. What's the problem, Aunt Maud? Problem? What are you talking about? There's no problem. Well, if there's no problem, I'd better get back to the hospital. People are getting winter chills and need my help. See you later. So while Aunt Maud continued to knit blankets, Millie and Molly kept looking after the garden the best they could, in the worst of weather. Bless you! Oh, not again. So bad was the winter that the hospital was filling up with patients. And Dr Smiley had a problem which had only one solution. Aunt Maud. What is it this time? I have a problem of epidemic proportions. I need more blankets. Well, I've made the best blankets in the whole town. Take them. Take them all. Just make sure those sick people appreciate my hard work. Thanks, Aunt Maud. Amazing, my garden's still thriving in this snow. No thanks to those girls. Couldn't they stick it out? Oh no, quite the opposite. They're in the hospital. They caught the winter chills too, tending your garden. Oh. Even when it was cold and raining and even snowing. You don't say. Mm. Soon, everyone who was sick had a nice, warm, Aunt Maud, best in the whole town, hand-knitted blanket. And Aunt Maud knitted two very special blankets, one for Millie, and one for Molly. Both had stripes and lots of yellow because Aunt Maud knew that Millie and Molly liked stripes and lots of yellow. Hmm. Aunt Maud. Now don't be taking your time. Make sure these two get the very best attention. Don't worry, Aunt Maud. The very best in the whole town. Hmm. And by the time school holidays had finished, Millie and Molly were well again. Well, I see everyone seems to have done very well with their vegetable growing over the holidays. Humphrey, what have you there? 
It's a potato monster. I drew it all by myself and it eats all the other vegetables. Hmm, <laughs> <laughs> very good, Humphrey. Um, Millie and Molly, where are your vegetables? Well, Miss Bly. Stop everything! Oh, Aunt Maud. Millie and Molly grew these healthy vegetables all by themselves. <gasps> wow. wow! And lots of others besides. I'll have no argument. These two are the most tenacious gardeners I have ever seen. Well, next to me, of course. I'm still the best gardener in the whole town. Oh, then well done, Millie and Molly. <laughs> and nobody has ever seen Aunt Maud smile before. <gasps> oh! Fiddlesticks. <laughs>
Making sure the other eggs are okay. I don't want anybody blaming me if they get broken. Ugh. Anyway, what are you doing here? We're checking too. Ugh. So we've checked and they're okay. Now let's go. Yeah, I'm not hanging around here with dumb girls. Mm. Girls are so dumb. <coughs> it doesn't make sense. Why would Humphrey come back to check on eggs that he thinks are dumb? Yeah, maybe he did come back to break them. It's lucky we were here. We need to watch that nest even more closely now, Molly. Humphrey's definitely up to something. Every spare moment, Millie and Molly continued their nest watch. And one afternoon, as the girls made a last check on the eggs before leaving... Wow! What's hatching? Look! Where's the other one? Hope you're not breaking those eggs! What's he doing here? I hope he doesn't come up. The eggs are okay, Humphrey. No need for you to come up here. Why shouldn't I, huh? <laughs> You might be... Wow! Hello, babies. Welcome to being born. So sweet. Yeah, that's so... So... So ugly and dumb. <laughs> and who cares about a couple of ugly, stupid birds? Did he nearly say something nice? Um, probably not. Now we've got even more reason to watch the nest. Yeah, these babies are even more precious than the eggs were. But later that week, something even more worrying than Humphrey was on its way.
Once the chicks start crying out in hunger, this creates the best chance for the parents to return. They sound pretty hungry. Yeah, where are those dumb parents? I hope they made it through the storm. Where do birds go in storms? I don't know. Maybe the book will tell us. Nope. But listen to this. If an egg is bad and will never hatch, the parent birds sometimes throw that egg from the nest. The broken egg! That's probably what happened to it. Oh! Hmm. You didn't break that egg, did you, Humphrey? I told you I didn't. No one ever believes me. Sorry, Humphrey. Yeah, really sorry. Oh. Look, it's them, the parents. Wow, they're feeding them. Hooray! We did it. Thanks for helping, Humphrey. Thanks a lot. Suppose. Humphrey, do you want to walk to school with Molly and me tomorrow? We can all check on the nest together. Forget it. I told you I don't like girls and I don't walk to school with them. Got it? Looks like we've got the old Humphrey back again. Yeah. <laughs> Who understands boys? <laughs> wow, look at that. Yeah, and that. While Humphrey was still going to be different from other people, Millie and Molly knew that deep down, he felt the same about some things. <laughs> Every morning before school, Humphrey had plenty of energy. Roar! I'm a Martian from outer space and I've come to take over the world. Roar! Come on, Molly. Let's be scared. <laughs> Roar! I'm coming, Earthlings. No, Humphrey. What's the hurry? I'm just chasing Millie and Molly. Well, let's hope you have the same energy for class this morning. I will. And the whole forest was saved from the bulldozers. The end. Did you like that story? Can we have another one? Right. Oh, dear. The story seems to have put Humphrey to sleep. <laughs> Humphrey. Humphrey, wake up. I didn't do it. Well, you couldn't have, Humphrey. You're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not have your breakfast before school? Ugh, don't like breakfast. Well, you'll need some tomorrow. All of you will. Because every morning for the next week or so, I'm going to pick someone to tell a story. And you'll need to have fed your imaginations with nourishing brain food breakfast. The best stories will get five stars. Mommy, mommy, mommy! I need some brain food for tomorrow because I'm going to tell a story about a big adventure in the jungle and wild animals and... Well, there's only one thing for it. The best brain food for the best story will be... Aunt Maud's muffins! You said yourself you can't decide what story to tell. Well, it will be something to do with the colour yellow. Or maybe a princess. So you'll need something very nourishing to feed your imagination. I know Aunt Maud can be snippy, but she does make the most nutritious, best-tasting, brain-feeding muffins in town. So Millie and Molly went to see Aunt Maud about her muffins for breakfast and hoped that she wouldn't be her usual snippy self. Fiddlesticks! You want to make my breakfast muffins? Well, um, we thought if he gave us the recipe... Give you the recipe? If you want my muffins, then I'll make them for you. The next morning, Millie and Molly couldn't wait to taste the yummy-smelling muffins <laughs> Aunt Maud had baked for their breakfast. Are they ready? Quiet! Out you come, out you come, out you come. Aunt Maud's a magician. I said quiet! If these muffins stick, I'll have you to blame. Out you come, out you come, out you come, out! Magic! You're a magician! Oh, no, I'm not. My chant never fails to deliver perfect muffins. That's all there is to it.
But even though Millie and Molly had fed their brains with muffins, Miss Blythe chose Jack to tell his story first. And he'd obviously had a good breakfast too. So the team captain got the soccer ball at half time and filled it with gas. And when he kicked it, it went up, 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 and over the goal, he said, into the net. And the good guys won the entire competition. The end. A very imaginative story, Jack. You may have five stars. No, if I can think of a story that good, just keep eating the muffins. Oh, dear. Humphrey, Humphrey. Huh? Just as well I didn't pick you this morning. Have you not had your breakfast again? Um, no, Miss Blythe. I really don't like it. Well, you'll not be getting any stars if your story isn't any good. You need something to supply that brain of yours with lots of ideas. We can help. But the next day, when Humphrey ah! realised Millie and Molly were taking him to Aunt Maud's for breakfast, he didn't seem to care how tasty ah! the muffins might be. But she's scary. She's not scary. Just a bit, um, snippy. She's not as scary as your robot dinosaurs from outer space. Rawr! Well... Do you three <gasps> want your muffins or not? Ah! What on earth? Sorry, Aunt Maud. <laughs> and... Mum Lane and I ran and ran with the giant angry elephant getting closer and closer when suddenly... Whoosh! Molly flew down in her yellow helicopter and saved us just in time. Hooray! And we lived happily ever after. Wonderful story, Millie. Five stars for you. Now, who will we choose tomorrow? Humphrey? What? I do hope you'll have breakfast soon, Humphrey. I'm running out of other people to pick. Millie and Molly had to find a way to get Humphrey to eat breakfast. So after school, Millie and Molly practiced cooking muffins themselves. That way, Humphrey wouldn't have to go to Aunt Maud's. They don't look as good as Aunt Maud's. And they don't smell as nice. Maybe they'll be alright once we get them out of the tray. We need to chant. Out you come, out you come, out you come, out. They're stuck. We don't have Aunt Maud's magic. They might still taste okay. It's no good. Humphrey will never eat these. It has to be Aunt Maud's magic muffins. The next day, Miss Blythe finally chose Humphrey. It was obvious Humphrey still hadn't had breakfast. Well, uh, well, um, there was... Uh, uh, um, Humphrey, concentrate. Well, there was, um, well, once upon a time, um... Oh, sit down, Humphrey. I'm afraid you won't be getting any stars for a story like that. Molly, have you got a story for us? Well, um, I'll try. <clears throat> Well, Molly, did you not have your breakfast too? I had Aunt Maud's magic muffins to feed my imagination. Well, then? Well, um, one day there was a princess called, uh, Princess Molly. <laughs> and she was the most cleverest painter in the whole world. But she couldn't find the right colour to finish Molly's her. story was long and complicated and very interesting and lasted right up to lunchtime. Of course, she finally found the right colour under the handsome prince, and the colour was yellow. And she finished the painting, and it was the most beautiful painting in the whole world. And she lived happily ever after. The end. <laughs> Lovely, Molly. Five stars for you. Humphrey, mm. I'm going to give you another chance tomorrow. I know there must be a wonderful story inside you. But you'll have to release it with some nourishment before you come to school. Everyone's got five stars. And I want you to get five stars too. Humphrey, you just have to eat some of Aunt Maud's muffins tomorrow. You just have to, or you'll get no stars. But I can't go to Aunt Maud's house. 
She's too scary. Then come to my place. Molly and I'll get you some magic muffins. Come to your house. What's wrong with mine? Nothing, Aunt Maud. You've got a lovely house. It's just that, well, um... Humphrey's frightened to come here. Fiddlesticks! What's there to be frightened of? Don't stand on my parsley! Oh! Sorry. Well, what's Humphrey frightened of? I don't have a dog. Nothing's going to bite him. Well, he's frightened of you. Me? Double fiddlesticks. Frightened of me? You're not frightened of me, are you? Um, uh... Well, are you? Not that much. Hmm. I see. So, will you come to my house tomorrow and make your muffins for Humphrey? Our muffins are very good. Huh. I'll think about it. The next morning, Humphrey went to Millie's place with the promise of delicious magic muffins to help him earn five stars for his story. Hi, guys. Those muffins smell good. We can't get them out. Let's try Aunt Maud's magic chain again. She's not here, is she? Out she come, out she come, out she come, out. They won't come out. Out she come, out she come, out she come, out. Oh, fiddlesticks. Let me have those muffins, you'll ruin them. Don't be frightened, Humphrey. Aunt Maud wants you to eat her muffins. She does. You don't think I came all the way over here just to frighten you, do you? Um... Well, do you? No, Aunt Maud. Well, you'd better eat them. I will, I will. <laughs> out you come, out you come, out you come, out. Magic. Magic. Um, magic? With a tummy full of Aunt Maud's magic muffins, Humphrey grabbed his second chance to tell his story. The brave, brave space captain had caught Martian sickness from the robot dinosaurs and could only be saved by his two friends who were brave and true. Just in time, his two special friends flew from the moon to save him. They never gave up on him and space captain was saved because the two brave heroes brought him the medicine. The end. Wonderful, yeah! Humphrey. Wonderful. Five stars for you. Well done. Roar! You realise Humphrey's story was about you two? No. You two were the true friends who saved Space Captain Humphrey. I've never heard Humphrey say anything nice before. Maybe Aunt Maud's muffins really are magic. <laughs> <laughs>they were visiting a new friend, Maxter. He'd just moved to town from the city and he had something special. Hello, I'm Millie and this is Molly. Well, well, well. Pass it, pass to him. Oh, We've come to play with Maxter and see his giant television set. Yeah. You'd best come in then. Go, go. Show. Beijing, go to Saunders. Go! You've got guests. Hi. Did you see that? They scored a goal. Yes, it was very interesting. Millie and Molly have come to play with you, Maxter. They can watch the TV with me. Oh, gee, thanks, Maxter. We've never seen a television this big before. Yes, run! Go! Woohoo! Is it true you've got 20 channels? 45. Oh. But it never seems to get off this channel. It only has soccer. We don't mind. Great kick! Shoot! 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 Oh, great pass! He's not going to kick it in here! Go! Go! Do you ever watch anything else? No. Not even cartoons? Are there any about soccer? I don't think so. He's offside! You can't do that! Well, thank you very much for letting us watch your big television. We might go outside now. Okay, bye. Wouldn't you like to come out and play too? Outside? Why? 
And he never plays outside. He's always inside. Really? No fresh air? No exercise? I thought you said Max delights soccer. He does, but he never plays it, only watches it on TV. On the biggest oh. TV in the whole wide world. That's big. He lived in the city and didn't have a park or anything. Well, he does now. Maybe he needs to learn to play outside. Ah! Marmalade must be hungry. It's delicious flesh. Mum, Dad. Yes, Millie? You want to know how to teach Maxter to play outside. Invite him to the park. Hmm, OK. But can we get a television as big as the one Maxter has? Of course. Really? As soon as you've finished school and high school and university and get a job so you can pay for it. Dad! This ferocious killing machine with its three rows of razor sharp... <laughs> So Millie and Molly invited Maxter to the park. Not too high. They played on the swings and waited for Maxter. <laughs> they played on the roundabout, but still no Maxter. <laughs> they played on the slippery dip. <laughs> but still there was no sign of Maxter. So finally Millie and Molly went to find out if something was wrong. Television. His foot was miles over the line! Ah! Well, well, well. You said you'd go to the park, and here you are, stuck in front of the TV. It's going off. No! Wait, please! Can we watch cartoons? No television. Please? Outside, you can play in the backyard with your new friends. Get some fresh air and exercise. It'll be fun! Hmm. But no sooner had they all gone outside, the Maxter had other plans. Not television again! Shh! My mother will hear! Well, well, well! Um, hi, Mom. Outside, but now! But no matter what Maxter's mother said, Maxter always found a way to watch television. Maxter! Hi. This old TV used to belong to my grand, but luckily it still works. I kept it for emergencies. Go! A go! Millie and Molly wondered if Maxter would ever stop watching television. By the time the weekend came, Millie and Molly had a plan. They were going to tempt Baxter outside. No! Kick it to the other man! Oh, this way! Around the back, Molly! Coming! Coming! It's heavy! Oh, that shouldn't be a goal! I love this one! Okay, thanks, Millie! This is going to be fun! Handball! Maxter had to choose. Television or find out what those girls were up to. It's going to be so much fun! Yeah! And then we can paint! What are you doing? Oh, we thought you were watching television. I... I was. Um, but all your noise. What are you doing? Can you guess? No, can you just tell me? I want to go and watch the telly. <laughs> no, we can't tell you. You have to guess. I don't know. Please just tell me. All this stuff. Why do we need all these things? Wood, nails, bucket, rope, boxes? I don't know. We're building something. Building what? <laughs> something up high. An airplane? <laughs> it has something to do with the tree. 
have another guess. We're building something and it goes in the tree. And we can all play in it. You, you mean a tree shack? Tree hut! I've never seen a real tree hut before. Only on television. If you help us, you'll have your very own. Really? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. For the rest of the day, Millie, Molly and Maxter worked hard to build their tree hut. And Maxter didn't once think about watching television. Well, well, well. Hey, Mum, look what we made without any help or anything, all by ourselves. This is our tree hut. And these are our curtains. And we even have a lift. Yeah. Magnificent! Well done! But it's time to get down now. Millie and Molly have to go home. Okay! Coming! But the tree hut was the beginning of a new problem with Maxter. I'm staying up here for dinner. Can you bring me my soccer magazines? Please, Mum? Maxter stayed in the tree hut for the rest of the afternoon. Maxter stayed in the tree hut for dinner. Maxter stayed in the tree hut to sleep. Maxter stayed in the tree hut even when it rained. After a couple of days, Millie and Molly were beginning to wonder whether building the tree hut was a good idea after all. At least Maxter's getting lots of fresh air. But no running around. He really likes being up in that tree hut. Yeah, the same as he really likes watching television. When he does something, he really does it. There has to be a way to get him down. Look out! Oh! Sorry! That's all right, Jack. I've just had an idea. Aren't those soccer posts just behind Maxter's house? Yes, you can see the tree hut. So, thanks. Jack, will you and Tom do us a favour? Hi, Maxter. We've come to look at the view. Yeah. View? It's just the house. But what about out here? Here I come. Here comes a goal. A soccer field. You could play soccer instead of reading about it. Or watching on a TV. Jack and Tom are in a team. You could join. Maxter had won man of the match. Well done, Maxter. You were great. I've decided on television. Mm. Oh, no. We thought you gave up watching television. I did, and I'm going to practice soccer so much that I'll be a soccer star. I'll be on TV instead of watching it. <laughs> well, well, well. Millie and Molly knew that Maxter probably would be a soccer star because when he did something, he really did it. Oh yes, Dolly. I think your brand new spotty hair ribbon is lovely. I got it especially for our picnic, Jemima. Millie and Molly loved having picnics in the park, especially with their precious dolls. Now would you like another cup of tea, Jemima? Oh, yes, please. Ready, Ready go! go. <laughs> I'm with you. Sorry for not. Better get this pasta thing first. Hi, pasta. Pasta, you.
she's staying for the weekend while her mother packs. Oh, is it this weekend they're moving? I get out! I get out! Auntie Morgan! Oh, I heard you, child. There's no need to shout. Yes, I'll really miss them. Me too. Her mum says they'll come back and visit. Big hug! That's a lovely hug, Ella Bella Boo. <laughs> Big hug! Hug's back. Oh. Mm -hmm. Wow, us, wow, us. <laughs> She likes wow. flowers more than hugs. Ella Bella Boo, no! Stop! Don't break everything <laughs> in sight! Bye, Ella Bella Boo! <laughs> See you! Bye bye! <laughs> Look, here's your lovely ball! Oh, will you look at the state of this rose bush? Ah, I know, nail scissors. When Molly got home from the park, she was in for a shock. She was just about to put Dolly and her tea set away when... Now, Dolly, I'll put you... Dolly, where are you? She's in your backpack. I saw you put her in. I know, but she must have fallen out on the way home. Quick, we've got to go back the way we came. Back at the park, Molly looked everywhere, but there was no sign of Dolly. Molly, we've already searched here. So Molly went straight to the police station. She's the same age as me, and her hair is sort of the same colour as mine. Oh, and remember, she's wearing the red spotty bow. Mm-hmm. And what colour eyes does she have? Blue, and she's about this tall. Uh, this isn't a missing person we're talking about here, is it? No, of course not. She's my doll. I'm sorry, Molly, but I can't put in an official police report for a missing doll, only for a missing person. Oh. Uh. You could try other places where people hand in lost property and make a list of all the people you might ask. OK, thank you. Excuse me, has anyone handed in a missing doll? See, si, I think. Oh. Now, under here, I have a box of stuff that's been left here and handed in. Take anything you want from here. Thanks. Good luck. Is it there? No. Nope. No. No. She's not in here. That's one of the list. Huh? Poor Dolly. Hope she's okay. This one's cute. And she needs a home. Maybe you could get to love her as much as Dolly. No. I could never love another doll as much as Dolly. I just know she's out there waiting for me. Somewhere. Millie, you don't think Dolly's lost forever, do you? Um, it's just that it's been a whole day now, so you might not find Dolly. <gasps> Thanks for staying the night. It's nice to have you and Jemima here. Maybe someone is taking really good care of Dolly. Someone who loves Dolly as much as you do. No. Nobody could love Dolly as much as I do. Nobody. day, Millie and Molly asked a lot of people, everyone on the list, if they had seen Dolly. But the answer was always the same. I'm sorry, Molly, but I haven't seen your precious Dolly. Thank you. Bye, Mr. Ferryman. That's almost everyone on the list. It's been nearly two days now. You've looked everywhere. I don't think... I'll just keep looking till the end of the day, okay? Then... then... I 
photos. Oh, I'll have to give up. Okay, there's just one more person left on the list. Aunt Maud! Do we have to? She's so snippy! At Aunt Maud's, Ella Bella Boo was getting ready to take Dolly to her new home in a faraway town. Ella Bella Boo, where are you now? Mummy's here. Time to go. Time to go. We could go, go bye bye. Goodbye. Safe journey. Oh dear. Don't miss that little terror. Oh, get a grip, Maud. Strong cup of tea, that's what you need. Uh, hello, please stop. Yes, I've got that, Aunt Maud. A missing precious china teacup. Long to your grandmother. Aunt Maud, unless you think it's been stolen, oh, I'm sorry, but it's not a police matter. No, you ask her. She's your doll. Huh? <gasps> Aunt Maud? Oh, fiddlesticks! What's wrong? My teacup! My precious china teacup! And it's gone! Oh... We could help oh, you look. Oh. Molly's really good at looking for lost oh. things. Cos she never gives up. Really? Um, sure I can help. But have you seen... No time for chit-chat. Got to find my precious teacup. That's the garden and the house. Search from top to bottom and no sign of it. It's hopeless. I'm never going to find my beautiful teacup. And it's nearly the end of the day, Molly, and still no sign of Dolly. And all the while, Dolly and the teacup were heading further and further away. Oh, uh, Maud, have you looked in your garden shed? Look, what is it? Dolly's body ribbon. This means Dolly was right here. Look. A teaspoon! So maybe Aunt Maud's teacup was right here too! Where? Ella Bella Boo must have been playing with it in here! And my dolly! So where is Ella Bella Boo now? Nearly a hundred miles away! One hundred miles away? Auntie Maudie! Ella, Ella Bella, Bella Boo! Boo. I forgot to take the Bella Boo's stroller. Ella Bella Boo, have you got... Dolly, you're safe. Ella Bella Boo, could you please give me Dolly? No, we got girl mine. Oh, what's that? That looks like... Oh, my precious teacup. All in one piece. Ella Bella Boo, she's my doll. I've been looking everywhere no! for her. No! We got girl mine! Well, darling, give Molly her doll. No! Mine! Mm. Mine! Come on, Ella Bella Boo. Give the doll back now. No! Mine! Oh, well, no, I'm running well, so late. The furniture van will be there before us. Okay, you can keep Dolly, but you have to love her more than any other doll in the whole world. And don't let her eat too many lollies. And bring her with you when you come and visit. Mm. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Molly. Now, can you close that door and lock it? We've got to get going. I'm sorry, but we're in a screaming hurry. This won't take a sec, I promise. Oh. Ella Bella Boo! Look! Huh? Oh! Let go! Let go! Mine! Uh. Mm. Dolly, I've missed you so much. Let go! Woo! So Aunt Maud got her precious teacup back. Hmm. <laughs> and Molly had her precious dolly back again. Molly had never really given up hope that they would meet again. 
and from then on, they were never parted.